Hey, good morning, church family. My name is Black Newborn, one of the youth pastors here at Christ Church Midrand. Just want to welcome you to our Church at Home Sunday service, especially if you're joining us for the first time today. A very warm and special welcome to you. You could have been anywhere else, but God, by His Holy Spirit, brought you to our family. So I hope that you're going to enjoy your time with us today. A time that's going to be filled with much singing, praising the Lord of the Scriptures, much worship to Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and a time where we're going to spend hearing God speak to us as his word is opened. So I'm going to pray for us to ask God to lead us by his Holy Spirit as we submit all that we're going to be doing to him. So please bow your heads and let me lead us in a time of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this time you've given us. Thank you for life. Thank you that we have breath in our lungs. Thank you, Lord, that all your mercies are new, your kindness, your grace is new for us this morning, Lord. Father, thank you that we have men who are faithful to your word, who open it up faithfully for us and expose the truth of scripture so that our hearts, Lord, may submit to your truth and your word. Father, I thank you so much for those who lead us in music. Pray, Father, that as we sing, our hearts may be warm, our hearts may be opened, our hearts may be softened to hear you speak to us, Lord. And our hearts may be nourished just by the gift of music. Father, I pray that you bless everything uh, that's going to be happening in our service today. And Lord, we think, especially just in light of our outreach week, we pray, Father, that you may help us, energize us afresh, energize us anew to share this glorious and good news with the rest of the people around us. We thank you, Lord, for all of these things we pray in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. So in light of our outreach week theme, the time is now. I just want to share a verse from a song I wrote a while back called Watchman. And this verse speaks to the hearts of this theme that the time is now for the watchmen and watchwomen of God not to sleep as the world around us is crumbling, as the world is falling around us. We need to take the glorious news that the kingdom of God broke through history when Jesus Christ hung on that cross died but rose from the grave and began a new thing, that the kingdom of God will not be shaken, that the kingdom of God will last forever. And that's the kingdom we want people to trust in. That's the kingdom that God is calling them to. So we need to share this glorious news of the gospel and go give it to people, especially in this time. And what this verse says is that we shouldn't feel the pressure of trying to twist the message of the gospel so that people can accept it. God is the one who saves. And he calls us to this glorious partnership with him. It's a privilege as we just share the good news as it is. And he does the rest of saving people, resurrecting dead souls from their graves and bringing them to life. So don't feel the pressure of candy coating the Bible. Don't feel the pressure of twisting the message of the gospel. Just share it as it is. And don't feel the pressure of trying to live like something that you're not so that you can try and draw people into the kingdom. Just live like a watchman, a watchwoman, and give them the undiluted, glorious news of the gospel. And yo, it's funny how we try and change the world as though we J. Christ the Savior. We want everybody else to assume a Christian behavior like we got saved from our own works and not grace. We shove in our beliefs and everybody like it's our space. We're very brutal with the approach in our teaching, forgetting that the grace is the key for what we preach it. We're acting like we're the holy one who was bleeding. If everyone was Christian, at least we'd have freedom. We're talking nonsense because life is getting real tense. We change the true gospel because we're trying to ease our conscience. We treat the ones not saved like they're animals, but then we change the word of God so we're the real criminals. And God sees us, so Lord, please forgive us. As Christians in the world, ironically, we're the ones heartless. We're not of this world, but we need to help it. We're not God himself, so we need to kill that habit. And with that said, go be watchmen and watchwomen. Don't twist the message of the scriptures or the gospel. Give them the undiluted truth that God gave his one and only begotten son to die for sinners like us and is returning anytime soon to call those who belong to him. Be a watchman, be a watchwoman, and tell those around you this message. Good morning, church. Uh, good morning, family. It's Martha here. Yeah? It is Outreach Week this week and next week. Outreach is all about saving lives and saving lives eternally. We are commanded to go out and make disciples. This morning I am with Nando. Nando is part of 
our family here at Christchurch Madrid. Nando, um, would you just please introduce yourself to the church so that they can get to know a little bit more about, uh, about you, who you are, uh, what you do. Good morning, church. Good morning, Martha. My name is Nando Luhasa. I am a mother of two, a teenager and a little one who's eight, and I am a human resources professional in the hospitality industry. Thanks, Nando. Nando, uh, please tell us how long you've been a Christian, if you can remember that, and also how that happened. I grew up in an environment where Christianity has always been there like most South Africans, but I would say that uh, being aware of my Christianity and practicing it, um, it has been about 70, 17 years. Wow, that's a very, very long time. So uh, you then say you became a Christian due to your upbringing. Or the seven years, 17 years, uh, did someone share the word with you or is it through your parents? Well, I would say that, you know, as, as we are affected by external influences, as teenagers or young adults, we sometimes question what we're doing and look outside um, for those external influences. And I was always, you know, going for altar callings and attending church. But then one day I just realized that that's not Christianity. Okay. So when or what made you realize that this is now Christianity? It was the birth of my son. Um, he, he was conceived out of wedlock and then I realized then that I was, I needed to change my life and I subsequently got married, but we, um, I, I decided while I was pregnant, it was like, that is when it happened that I found Christ in me. Wow. Nando, that is so sincere and such an honest testimony. Um, at work, you may, you may have mentioned that you were uh, in HR, in the hospitality industry. A very challenging uh, environment to work in or department. Would you just briefly mention what are the challenges that you face at work and that you have to deal with as a Christian? We don't have much time, but... Um, corporate South Africa is a very difficult environment to function in as a Christian on, and to live in. Um, so it becomes um, a situation where you have challenges every minute, especially in HR. I deal with a lot of corruption. I deal with being lured, trying to be lured into corruption. Um and unequal and unfair discrimination is the biggest one. So do you make it clear at work that you are a Christian and that you will not tolerate all those things? Yes. Um, people that I work with know that I'm a Christian and I found that it's easier for me to maneuver around that if they know. They are less likely to approach me with corrupt or unethical requests and behavior not because I'm perfect but they think that I am because I'm a Christian um, they don't know that I struggle as much as they do and a lot of the time they they don't want to talk about it they don't want to talk about Christianity or um, all of that because it's against the the policy mind you so Nando, it is really a great pleasure to have had you this morning. And I would just lastly uh, ask you, is there uh, any word of encouragement that you would have for someone who is a Christian in the workplace? What would you tell them if they had to uh, face all those challenges that you just mentioned? We know that corporate is brutal. You need to let the people that you work with know that you're a Christian and you need to let them know that you're flawed just like them. 
um, perhaps it would start those conversations that helped me to become a Christian as well. But have focus only on the source being Jesus because nobody can destroy you. No man can destroy you if you have Jesus in your life. Thank you, Nanda. And family, remember, please stay safe, sanitize, and wear your mask. Well, please would you join us as we sing together this great song of praise that calls God's people together to praise our Lord and our Savior. Let's do that together. Good morning, church. Uh, welcome again. My name's Kate, and I'm going to bring us some news um, that is important for this week that lies ahead, um, our outreach week. We're going to have the great um, pleasure of listening to Jomo in a short while. But before we do that, just to raise a few things. If you're new, uh, welcome to Christchurch Madran. So lovely to have you with us. Um, 
We, we're so glad that you found us on the website and we hope that uh, you'll stay and that you'll enjoy the service this morning. Uh, we have a number of life groups that you'll see um, on our website and we would really love for you to join one of the life groups. You can just give the leader a call and they'll connect you either with their WhatsApp group or they have coffee chats after the service um, and then they have midweek meetings. So please have a look at our life groups. Uh, then, as we've said, this week and next week, where Bishop Glenn will be preaching, we are having Outreach Week. And um, as you know, we are disciples who are trying to make disciples. So we have these services spe specifically to try and um, engage with people who haven't yet come to understand who Jesus is. So we'd love for you to make use of Outreach Week. There are many ways that you can do that. Um, the most important thing we can do is pray. We need to pray. We need to pray for at least three people. Pray for them by name and then invite them. Invite them to church next week or invite them to Christianity Explored, which starts on the 12th of July. Um, all the information for Christianity Explored will be on the website, Church at Home. Please have a look. Please sign up. It'll be on Zoom. Um, we're doing everything on Zoom. So please have a look and join Tian as he leads us through the Gospel of Mark, finding out who Jesus is and how we need to respond to him. The other things you can do is you can host a watch party on Facebook. Um, so instead of just using Facebook to check the latest Chelsea scores, you can host a, a, a watch party. And um, Gareth has taught us how to do that. Um, I'm hitting 50 and I've learned to host a watch party, so I'm excited about that. So please, um, do that. Then you can also, for the people who like to read, there are, there's a book, there are a number of books online that you can uh, invite your friends to read with you. Um, also, you can find them on our website. And then the other thing, which is also a great thing, you can invite one of our guys, Martin or Royden or David or Eddie or myself to join you and some of your friends and ask the hard questions. Um, you can do that on Zoom or on Microsoft Teams or WhatsApp, whatever works for you. So please, um, please use these um, tools, these ideas to reach your friends, your family members and your colleagues. Uh, the time is now. Uh, we need to make the most of the opportunities that the Lord has given us uh, to reach out to our friends so that they too can know and understand who Jesus is. So please um, enjoy the rest of the service. Um, those of you who are regular members, uh, please remember that you can, um, uh, you can tithe. Uh, there are various options. You know them. Um, so please have a look on the website for those details. Also, where you can continue to contribute and give money to gospel work here at Christchurch Madrid. So enjoy the rest of the service. Um, please pray fervently for these two weeks and for Christianity Explored. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Hello, my name is Michelle Mari. I'm 27 years old. I was born in Johannesburg and lived and was raised in Midrand for all of my life. I am a member at Christchurch Midrand and am currently one of the youth ministry leaders. Um, I'm also an attorney um, and as it turns out is my love for the law of the Republic of South Africa is not as great as my love for God's law. Um, although the Constitution still holds a very close second place. <laughs> um, and I'm here to tell you about Christianity Explored, um, which is a great course offered at Christchurch Midrand. But I guess I'll first start by telling you about my faith and my walk with Jesus Christ. Um, from a young age, I was blessed enough to know the Lord. Um, I actually went to Christchurch Prep um, throughout my primary school and Christchurch College throughout my high school. And being in an environment like that where it was God-centered, and Bible centered where there was a importance placed on um, reading the Bible and praying and whilst being surrounded by like-minded people um, 
and being taught by them, um, adult and children alike, um, was really, really invaluable for me and is a large reason um, for why I am the way I am today and who I am today. Um, but as a lot of you would know is that what is difficult or can be difficult for people who grow up in the church or grow up in a church environment is really being able to grasp the importance of practically um, pursuing your faith um, and placing that responsibility in your own hands without being prompted by your environment. And so after school, I did what uh, most people do. Um, you pursue um, what it looks like to have a good life. So I pursued my studies and I pursued my career and I pursued my um, relationships, um, friendships and uh, romantic relationships, ho hoping they will lead to f a fruitful marriage. And um, what ultimately happened is that um, these pursuits um, showed themselves to be disappointing outside of God. My, my studies um, took longer than I hoped at an institution I didn't necessarily plan on studying at. Um, uh, my career uh, was uh, filled with all sorts of um, emotionally and psychologically draining goalposts. Um, and my long-term relationship um, proved itself to be one-sided um, and fruitless. And it was at the disappointing um, realization um, that these things couldn't fulfill me um, is when I realized that the only time I was actually content and fulfilled was when I was immersed in a God-centered environment. And so I started to pursue consistently going to church as a priority, reading the Bible, uh, praying as a priority in my life. And when I started doing that again, it was like coming home. And so now I'd like to invite you into this home by inviting you to Christianity Explored Online. Um, the course starts from the 12th of July at 5.30 on a Sunday and will continue for the next few Sundays for six weeks at the same time. And it's just a fantastic opportunity for people who are seeking God or new Christians to really just grasp what it is that is at the heart of the Christian faith and what it means uh, to know the good news of the gospel. And for um, more mature Christians and people who are more secure in their faith, it is just a fantastic opportunity to be reminded that there is never enough of God to know. So I'd really encourage you to um, RSVP. You can do so by sending an email to ce at christchurchmidrand.co.za. And lastly, I would just like to leave you with this and remind you that God is always actively uh, pursuing you. And there is no time uh, better than right now to turn around and pursue him right back. Good morning, family. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That is the book of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. It reads as follows. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern 
asleep in the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of God. Good morning, Christchurch Midrand family. I hope you guys are bearing up under the load of lockdown in Jobek. While living in Kazan and, and having visited Gauteng a few times, I'm sure the traffic is still just as bad, even though you have this lockdown limitation. Oh, what a wonderful time that we could share God's word together with you. Let me just introduce myself to you. My name is Jomo, and I'm a rector of Christ Church Hillcrest, and I'm married to this beautiful soul. My name is Brenda. I'm married to Jomo, and we have three beautiful kids, two girls and one boy. It has been an incredible journey that we've had with you guys in Gauteng. The partnership that Christchurch Hillcrest has with Christchurch Midrand has been of great gospel benefit. So we are praying for you this weekend. We ask that God will indeed uh, bless you, protect you, and be with you as a church family, just as much as we know you are praying for us. We love you guys. Won't you please bow your head and pray with me as we prepare to come to God's word together. Our gracious Father and eternal God, we come to you in Jesus' name this morning with our hearts full of thanksgiving for the many blessings you've showered upon our lives for protecting us and our loved ones, for giving us strength to continue in our faith, and for guiding us in times of trouble and for granting us peace when our restless souls are troubled. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm sure you've heard it many times when people compare crises of life with a storm. They say these storms of life, they come to us, whether we are prepared or not. And sometimes we have to face these storms, whether we are ready or not. Think about this COVID-19, if we continue with this image. We knew that the coronavirus had hit China, and we knew that it was spreading uh, in Europe. And we knew it was going to come to South Africa sometime. It was not a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And indeed, it did hit the shores of our country. And now, as a country, we are going through it. The government has done everything it can to prepare and help us to survive this storm. We have to face it, all of us. Whether you are ready or not, you have to face it. But sometimes storms of life, they hit us when we are not prepared and we, we just didn't see it coming. It just hits us. Think about those times when you're driving along, say, N1, and suddenly there's a storm. There's no service station near you where you can go and hide. You know you just have to face it. You may indeed stop the car and wait for it to pass, or you may drive slowly, but you know you have to go through it. You have no choice, even though you were completely unprepared for it. And Think about um, a completely different example. If, for example, you get involved in a car accident and you lose a limb, you know that your life will never be the same again. 
You know you have to make big adjustments. You know you have to make big decisions about your life. The same is also true when it comes to retrenchment. And you go to work and you know the business is not doing well. It's struggling here and there. But you just don't think you could be retrenched. And the next minute you're called in the office and you're told you've just been made redundant. And as you walk out of that office, you know you may lose your house. You know you may lose your car. And you know that your dignity is at stake. Unless you get a job quickly, you know your life is going to face real, real challenges. One minute, everything is well with you and you're doing great. And the next minute, life is completely upside down. And fear may just become your close friend. And you don't want to be with people. You just want to be by yourself to try and process the challenges you face. No idea whether you would survive the storm or not. No idea how long the storm would last. And no idea what the future may hold for you. See, these are challenges we, we face in life. And I know that some of you may be going through that right now. Well, the passage we're looking at this morning comes from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. In this passage we're looking at, Jesus uh, is with his disciples and they are traveling across the lake. And here's the thing. Jesus had spent the day preaching the gospel and performing miracles and the disciples were there to witness all of it. And they're now on the boat traveling across the lake. And Jesus was tired and he had recused himself and he wanted to take an early nap. And so the guys are in the boat and the guys are talking. They're discussing how the day was like. And they may be even reflecting on some of the key element of Jesus' teaching. And they were inspired by this, challenged by this, and asking one another, what did you think of that? There was maybe a huge discussion going on there. And suddenly, and suddenly, they were in the middle of a great storm. See that in verse 37? It was so bad that the waves were breaking into the boat and the boat was beginning to sink. And at this point in time, these guys, they knew they were in trouble. The disciples, they had no, no warning and no time to prepare for the storm. They just had to fight and fight for survival. They were thrown in the middle of, cri of crisis. In fact, when you read this passage, you could see that they were at the mercy of this storm. They were scared to death. And remembering that some of these guys were fishermen, they understood the danger they were facing. They knew death was staring them in the face. And they had to do everything they can to save themselves. Well, in that struggle, while they were running up and down and trying to help and save themselves, they suddenly realized, hey, Jesus is not here. Where is he? Where's Jesus? And they suddenly looked for him and they found him. You ever look at it? They found him in the stand, fast asleep on the cushion. That's what verse 37 tells us. He was fast asleep. He was, he was in peace in the middle of the storm. And they couldn't believe their eyes. There was this crazy storm going on around them. And there was Jesus fast asleep. And they wake him up. Have a look at verse 39. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Imagine these guys getting to Jesus and they say to him, I, born daughter, wake up. The storm is on us. Why are you sleeping? 
Don't you realize that our lives are in danger? Don't you care? Wake up. They needed all the help they could get. But think about it. When they woke Jesus up, what did they expect him to do? Jesus, wake up. Maybe, here's the bucket. Help. All hands on deck. We want you to help. Get on with it. Could it be? Is that what they thought? Or was it more? And I want to believe that they had no idea what Jesus would do on that faithful um, day. If they expected him to grab a bucket and help them just throwing the water off the boat, they were just about to be surprised. To their amazement, Jesus woke up calmly and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the Bible tells us that the wind ceased and that there was great calm. And I hope you're looking at this verse because I'm, I'm literally reading the verse. He rebuked the wind and, the, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. Pause for a moment and think about it. The wind stopped immediately and the waves were flattened out. If this was the end of the passage, if this, there's no story after this, if this is just how this, the passage ends, think about it. What would you think the guys would be doing afterwards? The wind has died down and the boat is sailing smoothly. I don't know about you, but in my own thinking, I think they would, they would celebrate. They would spend time celebrating at what they've just seen. They've just witnessed an incredible, incredible miracle. The storm was over and their lives were saved. And they, were, they had every reason to open that a bottle of wine and celebrate Guys, we are alive. When you've got Jesus in the boat, you are safe. He's just saved us. Well, we know that that's not how the passage ends, isn't it? Have a look again. Verses 40 to 41. We're told that the disciples were terrified. They were scared. Now, why would they be scared now that the wind has died down. Why would they be scared if the Bible tells us that there was great calm outside and there was this just peace? There was this quietness on the boat. In fact, their silence was so loud that when Jesus looked at them and he asked them the question, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? They were kind of like just locked in there and looking at it and thinking, what have we just seen? What has just happened? And Jesus turns to them and he says, guys, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the question, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Often when we read that question, we tend to read it as if Jesus is referring to their fear of the storm. But please do notice that the question is in the present tense. So Jesus is not saying to them, why were you afraid of the storm? No, that's not what this question is. The question is, why are you afraid as a result of what you've just seen? And that's why he links it with faith. Because Jesus could see that these guys were, were terrified, not because of the storm that has just died up, but because of what Jesus has done to bring the kind of calmness that they were now enjoying. 
And he says, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Jesus is rebuking their disciples for the lack of faith or lack of understanding of what he is able to do. They still didn't understand his authority over both their lives and nature. To be scared of the storm was a natural thing. Jesus perfectly understood that. He knew that they would be scared. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? But now they're facing a different fear, and the fear of who is this man in our boat? Not that the question came after the storm. You have seen many things. You've seen many miracles that I have performed, Jesus is saying, basically. You've heard my teaching, and you still don't believe. You still get so shocked and surprised by what I've just done. Do you still not understand? Do you still don't believe? Why are you so shocked? The Bible says they were still filled with great fear. And they said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now can you see the link of their response to Jesus' question? And that's why I believe that Jesus is not talking about the storm. What, what really terrifies these guys is what Jesus had just done. And they say, who is this? Who is this man? Who is this man? How amazing is this? That the same people who rebuked Jesus for sleeping in the middle of the storm were now trembling with fear because they just realized that they had God in their midst. That they have someone who has complete authority over nature. They realize God is on our boat. Although they believed that Jesus came from God, but somehow they still didn't fully understand who Jesus really was. They didn't. They were shocked to the core. Not even in their wildest dreams would they ever thought that Jesus could calm the storm the way he did. And they saw his mighty power and they were terrified. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is an eternal question. And this is an unavoidable question. Each and every man and woman who's ever walked on the face of the earth would have to make up his mind about who this man is. And throughout uh, this talk, I want you to be thinking this through. Who is Jesus? Have you made up your mind about who Jesus is? All of us, we have to make up our minds about it. And this morning, it is time. It is the perfect time for you to make up your mind about who Jesus is. This morning is the time for you to answer this question because your eternal life depends on it. Who is Jesus? Well, many of us as South Africans, we would want to rather just give our, the normal, famous South African answer. Angazi. Angazi who Jesus is. Well, that's not a good enough answer. There is no way you could continue to sit on the fence. The stakes are high. Your eternity depends on it. Who is Jesus? Is he the savior? 
or is he? Prophet? A great preacher? A historian? Who is Jesus? For some people, they have told us that Jesus was a great prophet. And others, they claim he was an incredible preacher. A God-gifted preacher. And others called him a miracle worker. And still others call him a criminal who died like a criminal, surrounded by criminals. And the question for you is, who is this Jesus? Who is he? What's your answer? Isn't it right that you make up your mind on this one? Isn't it time that you turn to Jesus and ask for forgiveness for your sins and surrender your life to him as Lord and Savior? If you don't know who this Jesus is and you haven't really understood him, let me tell you what the Bible tells us about him. The Bible tells us that Jesus is, not was, is the Son of God. That he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That he is the Savior of the world and he will also be the judge of this world. Why? Because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And that's the Jesus I'm talking about this morning. We will need to make up your mind. Who is this Jesus? You can't postpone this decision forever. Maybe you've heard the gospel many times and you've been part of the church and you've heard even in the Bible studies people teaching about Jesus. You have friends who are Christian, but you've just been pushing this decision and pushing this decision. Well, I want to say to you today is the time for you to make up your mind about who this Jesus is. My brother, my sister in Christ, think about your life. Think about everything that you have gone through and the things you are going through now. And kind of like imagine the things you're still going to go through. Wouldn't you agree with me that God has been gracious to you? That God has protected you and that God has provided for all your needs even though you neither glorify him or give thanks to him. That God has, in spite of that, been gracious to you. Today, I ask you, today I challenge you to turn to him in faith. It's your time. The fact that you're watching this, it's because God is affording you the opportunity to hear the gospel because he wants to have that personal relationship with you. It's time. You turn to him for your salvation. Jesus who saved the disciples is the same Jesus who can save you today. He saved them both from their sins and from the storm. And the same Jesus is able to save you from your sins and to sustain you in the midst of whatever you are going through. But you have to come to him in faith and put your life, your hopes, your future, your dreams in his hands because he is able. A time is coming, my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
A time is coming when all those who refuse to come to Jesus would have their knees bent before Jesus. And they will confess him as Lord and Savior. But it will be too late. On that day, they will see his power and his authority over their lives as well as over everything else. But it will be too late. They will be shocked. Their hearts will be broken. They will tremble with fear, just like the disciples did when he calmed the storm. But it will be of no use. This morning, it's time. And it's the right time for you to come to him. And that's why I am inviting you to turn to Jesus in faith. Maybe you've been part of the church for too long and you've gotten so used to being religious. The question I want to ask you is, do you really understand who Jesus is? In your understanding, is Jesus the Son of God? Is Jesus the only way to God? Is Jesus your Lord? Is Jesus your Savior? Do you understand? Do you understand this? Have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? It is important for us who are church people to understand that Jesus is not really interested in church goers. Jesus is in the business of making disciples. Jesus is not interested in people who are religious. He is interested in people who want to have a personal relationship with him. And for those of you who believe and have been Christian and you are committed to Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are living for him daily, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, take courage in knowing that Jesus is with you. You know, to become a Christian, it it doesn't mean we will not go through the storms. It just simply means we will never go through the storms alone. He will always be be with us. He has said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And God would not take you from where he rescued you to place you where you are now and then leave you. No, he will not. He will always be with you. You will never walk alone. And you will never be alone. Think about it. If you're a Christian, even if you are in self-isolation at the moment, you are not alone. Jesus is with you right there. You're not alone. In the words of Paul in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, He who began a good work in you will carry it and will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It means what God has started in you, he will bring it to conclusion. And that's why I want you to remember and to have this confidence and that you are not alone and you will never be alone. And that is one of the great privileges that we have as Christians, that God in Christ is in us, with us, and will always be in us, and will always be with us. Let me close by saying to you, as a Christian, press on like a good soldier, And keep your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, your Savior and your Lord. And to you who is not a Christian, you've heard the message. 
you need to make up your mind about who Jesus is. And the answer to that question is this. He is the Lord and the appointed saviour of sinners. And all you need to do is to come to him in faith and be saved. Let us pray together. Father, we pray for the church in Midrand and we pray for each and every member of this church in Midrand. We thank you for them. We thank you for their commitment to you, these brothers and sisters who are faithful in their service. And we pray you would protect them, you would sustain them, and you would provide for them. And we pray for many friends of the people of the church in Midrands who are invited to be part of this service. Lord, would you please give those who have not made the decision about Jesus, give them courage to make the decision. Give them strength to accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And Lord, bring friends close to them who will walk with them, encourage them, read scriptures with them, and faithfully pray for them. And that even when they think about and preparing to be part of the Explore groups, Lord, would you please use those groups to nature and grow your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, church family. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word which has been shared with us this morning. Through the power of your word, you are able to bring us from death in our sins to life in your Son. Lord, in your kindness and mercy, we thank you that you are still calling us towards the kingdom of the Son that you love, Jesus Christ. Help us not to ignore you, but rather to listen to you and to obey you. We ask that through your word, you may soften our hardened and rebellious hearts so that we may understand and believe in your son who died for us on the cross. May your word find fertile ground within us this morning. May the cares of this life not blind us to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. Please help us to correctly understand the price which he paid and not to make light of his sacrifice. Through your spirit, please help us to respond in faith by trusting in you and in your promises. Therefore, help us to denounce sin and to rather choose to follow you every day with our thoughts, dreams, and actions. As we trust in you, please surround us with godly men and women with whom we can walk the journey of faith in the midst of these current challenges, please give us the discipline to attend Bible study regularly, to talk to you through prayer, and to hear from your word in the Bible so that we may grow in our faith and knowledge of you. We ask that in the coming months and years, you would cause us to mature in our faith. Lord, please use us as your servants and your vessel to tell other people who may not know you about your son and all the good things that he's done. And finally, with your gracious hand upon our lives, lead us safely home to the time when we will meet our Lord and be with him forever in eternity. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Morning everyone, my name is Kate Orenstein. I'm the women's worker here at Christchurch Midrand. And um, I just want to do an advert for Christianity Explored that will be starting after our outreach Sundays. So the 28th of June and the 5th of July, we are going to be deliberately having services that are trying to reach out to those who don't know who Jesus is. Um, and after that, we will start with Christianity Explored. Many of you have gone through that course with Tian and others, and we will be running it via Zoom on, starting on Sunday the 12th of July at 5.30 p.m. 
All the details will be on the website on Church at Home. And the idea is to explore how Jesus answers questions. And especially thinking of the questions that COVID-19 has thrown at us. What does Jesus say about my physical health? What about my independence and autonomy? And of course, what does he say about my wealth? So make use of this opportunity, please, to invite your friends to join you at Christianity Explored. It's a great way of reaching out to our friends, our family members, and our colleagues. The time is now. All our information will be available on Christchurch Midrand website. And um, I would encourage you, please, to have a look to pray for people and to um, invite them to join us at Christianity Explored. Thank you very much. I've got some exciting news for us. It's Outreach Week from the 28th of June to the 5th of July. Outreach Week is something we do every year, and it's a week where every ministry devotes all their attention to outreach. Keep an eye out for some of the events that are going to be coming up over Outreach Week, and why not invite some friends and family? Now, I know what you're thinking. How can I invite friends and family to a service that is online? Well, I'm going to show you how to host a watch party on Facebook. Let's have a look. Go to www.facebook.com. Select groups on the left of the page. Select create new group and create a group that you will invite your friends to. Choose a privacy setting. Then select the friends who you want to invite to Outreach Week 2020. Remind your group to come join you a few minutes before the service starts at 9.30 on your Facebook group. Select the bar under Create Post. Select the three dots at the bottom right of the screen and select Watch Party. Then search Christchurch Midrand. Scroll down our videos until you find our service for that Sunday. Click Next, click Post, and the Watch Party will start. By selecting the video on your group's feed, the video will enlarge before you, and you'll be able to see those who are watching the video with you, and you'll be able to interact with them via the comment section on the right. This is a wonderful way to watch the video with your friends and family, and afterwards you can chat with them about the service. So that's the end of the video. Why don't you go now and organize your own watch party and help us with Outreach 2020.